Hello folks, this is a new video on how to fix your windshield wiper motor. I have a previous video that uh, I have posted that talks about how to do that on a GMC Sonoma 1994, but I've since learned a better method of resolving the problem and wanted to describe it here for you today. Lucky for me, I have a 2001 GMC Tahoe and the windshield wipers were frozen to the windshield like that can happen all the time in Canada and I turned the wipers on and before I knew it I uh, and the wipers weren't moving I turned the switch off and the damage had already been done to the pulse board this video talks about the design flaw in the General Motors uh, windshield wiper motor and also a workaround for it that you're gonna you, you won't replace the pulse board again even if your windows freeze up or your wipers freeze up so um, I'm quite excited about this I'm hoping it works well and I want to talk to you about how to how to do the fix so the very first thing is how do you get to the pulse board and that's what the circuit board is called in the windshield wiper motors and you want to use a 13 millimeter wrench and remove the um, the bolt on the uh, sorry the nut on the top of the windshield motor uh, arm there's one there and then there's one there and then you want to use a small puller like this uh, there are other two job pullers around there's a tiny one this is actually a battery cable remover to pull the uh, windshield wipers off of the shaft and I find it's uh, quite a bit easier to do that and you don't damage the stud if you have the nut part way down onto the stud. So now you've got your windshield wipers off and you're, you've got this huge cover, this great big plastic cover right here that I now have off and I have it just kind of dangling beside the truck on the driver's side. And uh, in order to get that off, there's a Phillips screw. This is the driver's side, remember, and there's the driver's side hinge right there. And then in the very back, there's a Phillips screw right there. You need to take that out. You need to take it out on the other side as well. In order to get to those screws, there's a little cover that you need to pry off. Oh, where is it? Here. There's, there it is there. One of those on each side, so you pry those. I think you have to get those off to get to that screw. I can't remember. I took them off anyway. And uh, then the other thing you need to do is these clips right here, they hold that plastic cover on to like it to kind of the clip is a u-shaped clip and it squeezes the plastic cover down onto this surface on the, the top of the firewall here so it just kind of clamps them together there are three of those use a standard screwdriver and pry them out then you'll see right here the windshield wiper motor is staring right at you and you will need a uh, it has torx bolts in it three of them to hold it on and you will need a t20 torx to take it out so the uh, Torx bolts for sure. Don't try and do it with a Phillips. You might scratch, uh, you know, strip it or scratch it or whatever. Screw it up. So once those uh, once those bolts are out, this electrical connector right here that uh, the pulse board goes into, I find is a real pain in the neck to pull it off, and uh, it's just easier for me to remove to get the pulse board out and then flip it over and then have a good look at the locking tab for that connector and pry it out with a standard screwdriver. Be careful you don't break it. This uh, pulse board, when the bolts are out, should lift up, but you want to wiggle a little bit because it has the four prong, or uh, I guess there are three contacts right here that actually go into the motor and control the motor. So be careful with that and get that out. When I did that, I could see a diode, a big fat diode, lying right on top of the gear of that pulse board, like or the gear for the wiper motor, right, right there in the center of the picture. So my diode was sitting there. It's a great big diode. I'm going to show it to you in, oh, come on, in better lighting right now. So, here's the actual diode, and it's a big one, it's way bigger than normal, and the rating on it is 10A04, and underneath that it says MIC. I assume that's 10 amps, and I don't know what the 04 is, but 10 amp maximum rating is my assumption. I guess it could be 4 amps maximum, but I don't know, it doesn't matter. Anyway, that diode was lying on my gears. Well, what had happened was, when the wipers were frozen, the circuit got so hot that it liquefied the solder, and the uh, diode is on the downhill side of the board, and the gravity just pulled the diode out, and it fell out. And when I bought this truck, it had that same problem. And so uh, the last time I was uh, thinking I fixed it, and I just soldered it back into place, but I realized uh, that's uh, not a great fix. It's going to happen any time I park outside and forget to check my wipers before I turn them on. So what I've done here uh, is really there's GM should have put a thermal cutout on this and it's just disgraceful that they didn't. But anyway, 
What I have uh, here is I soldered, I, I drilled a hole in the side of this thing, um, soldered in two wires where the diode used to be, and it's very clearly marked on there which is the anode and which is the cathode. And uh, in case anybody forget, doesn't know, the arrow points, the arrow in the circuit board points to the white band on the diode on this end. So in case yours has fallen out and you don't know which way to put it back in, that's the way it goes back in. This white or silver band, I guess, goes towards the diode. So it would look like... Come on. Look like this. If anybody wants to buy me a better camera, I'd be happy to make better videos. Anyway, so it would go on the circuit board like that, right there. All right, so what I did was I took the diode out. I soldered these two wires in place of the diode and they come kind of out away from it, out away from the pulse board. Then I soldered the diode in series, and then I put a fuse in here. Uh, ideally, I would have had a thermal cutout installed here, but I didn't know what size to buy, and I didn't want to waste time trying to figure that out. So I bought a uh, fuse holder, uh, four bucks a Canadian tire, and then a fuse to stick in there, and, um, and then I had this other open end. And so what I did, I put the whole thing back together, put an ammeter in here, and uh, to protect my ammeter, which is uh, not fused and has a 10 amp maximum rating, I did put a red 10 amp fuse in here. I, wasn't, I didn't have any idea how much current we'd be drawn through the circuit, but I figured I'd rather blow a fuse than ruin my meter. Anyway, I checked the uh, no load current draw. I had my wipers off, of course, so there's absolutely no load. It was only 1 amp at no load. Now, I just suspect that will be substantially more when it is under heavy load, but uh, what I'm going to do is put this thing all back together. Uh, actually, I've got a piece of heat shrink that I'm going to put over this first so that I uh, you know, don't short anything out. I left it off so I could show you folks. And uh, I will solder, this, uh, solder these together right here. And I will start, um, I'll put it all back together, and then I'll measure which fuses, what's the, okay, how do I want to say this? What is the lowest size fuse or lowest amperage fuse I can put in that will not blow the fuse when the wipers are wiping on a dry window. And what I'm hoping is I can kind of find, maybe it's like 2 amps or 3 amps or something like that, and then it'll be enough to let this work under normal conditions, even normal heavy conditions, but if my wipers are ever frozen, it'll blow, blow this fuse before it liquefies that solder again. So that's my hope. I'm going to put this all back together, and uh, I will post in my comments um, how, how, it way, how it made out. I'm also going to tell you the fuse value that I ended up with. And uh, I might wait a week or two before I post a video just to tell you, you know, in case I, I went a little too low and I had to kind of increase the fuse size a couple times. So that's what I'm going to do, and hopefully it works. And I really would encourage you guys to fuse yours if you find the same problem. And shame on you for GM for not doing a better job with this. It's disgraceful. Okay, thanks. I like GMs otherwise, but this is just ridiculous. Have a good day.